Hello everybody, welcome back to one of my vids and it is Sunday, it's the end of the month and it's time for another pickups video and I have been quite busy as you can probably see with these, been quite busy this month picking up stuff so uh, a lot of it is cheap, cheap and nasty or cheap and good depending how you look on it. Uh, so yeah let's jump straight in and the first one, these are all from the same seller so they, they're cheap and I can buy in the postage. Uh, that is Ghostbusters on a specy. Game, uh, I can't really remember, but I used to love the movie as I think we all did, but I can't really remember Ghostbusters, but for a pound I thought it's worth grabbing and reminding myself. Uh, next one is Joe Blade 2, which I used to love all of these Joe Blade games back in the day, so I've played all three of them. Don't have Joe Blade 1 yet, but um, yeah, I look forward to playing those. Again, it's like a pound, so cheap and cheerful. Then we've got Technician Ted which was a game I didn't own, but my best mate did, and it was a hard game. Oops, throwing it around. Yeah, it was a tough game. It's kind of like Manic Miner and um, what's the other one? Jet Set Willy. Jet Set Willy kind of style. This one isn't the best condition, but for what I paid, again, it was £1.50, I think. So, yeah, I'll give that a go. I won't get very far. I won't do a video of it because I'm terrible at those platform games. And then we've got, this was a brilliant shoot them up which is Eurydium. Um, C64 had the best version of this but the, the Spectrum version was pretty good. Didn't have the colours obviously being specky but it was it had speed and it was a good game. That sticker I was hoping was going to be on the actual um, jewel case but it's not actually it's on the inlay so I may or may not be able to get that off there but again it was only a couple of pounds so uh, no big deal. Then we've got another game I used to really love Commando Brilliant, fun game. So uh, that was one I was planning to get. And again, it was the same seller. It was, I think it was like two pounds or something like that. But um, yeah, I only received these yesterday, so I haven't played that yet, but I used to really enjoy Commando back in the day. And lastly, another game I used to really enjoy, which is Frank Bruno's Boxing. And uh, yeah, I didn't know at the time, but I think this was basically punch out for the spectrum. I don't know if there's any, if it was the same developers or whatever, but um, it was a good game, a good fun game. And I was always a big fan, not only of boxing, but of Frank Bruno. So, uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm drinking a banana bread beer there. Very nice. It's uh, I'm off Sunday, Mondays, so Sundays are my Saturday. And then we come on to, now these are all, there'll be a, a follow-up video on this one because I'm going to do a video about... Um, Pac-Man clones, because I, I, I love them. I've always been a Pac-Man fan. Not that I'm ever a high school guy, but just enjoyed them. And I find the Pac-Man clones quite interesting. So uh, these are all Pac-Man clones, which I'm collecting now. Haunted Hedges, which is a really cheap one. It's kind of basic, but yeah. This one I've already done a video of, but I will be... If there's interest, I'll do a video of each of them. I, I might put a sort of a, a feeler video up first to see if there's any interest in... Um, in videos of these before I bombard everybody with uh, Pac-Man clones. Next one is Gobble of Ghost, which I think I used to own, can't quite remember, but really cool artwork on there. And this is, that one was uh, 1648k, I think this one is 16k, so it's going to be quite basic, but um, yeah, these are quite fun, I, I just enjoy Pac-Man games. This one was a bit of a hit and miss because I was excited to find it, uh, probably paid a little bit over the odds because I paid four quid for this, including postage, but you can get it for a couple of quid really. Um, the reason it was a miss is it's got, I don't know if you can see there on the front, it's got some, down through here you've got some stains, goes through to there, and it's, it's all the way inside actually, and the game, when you start loading it, it, it starts sounding all weird, so I think unfortunately the, the moisture got to it, so uh, yeah, that might be one for the bin. It may be because I've got a plus 2A, so uh, I'll try another. I'll try and get another copy of it first and just see if that loads. If, if the other copy loads, I'll chuck this one out. If, if the other copy doesn't load either, then I might just try to sell this for a couple of quid. But yeah, well, that's that one. Then we've got this one I did used to own, and I always liked the artwork for this. That's one thing I really remember, which is Nasha. And uh, again, it's going to be quite a basic one. But I, I love all the uh, Mastertronic artwork. They just looked so much of their time, didn't they? So uh, that one again, probably do a video at some point. Then we've got uh, Gogman. 
16K only. I think this was kind of a cross between Pac-Man and Bomberman, if I remember rightly. But again, I haven't played it yet. It cleaned up quite nicely, but um, these are all quite cheap to get so far. Uh, this one isn't cheap to get and it's hard to find. And this one, I actually bought it as a cassette only. I put a want to buy out on Sinclair for sale for, for the whole game. And as is as usually happens, if I put a want to buy in Sinclair for sale, people don't reply to it, but then next thing somebody will put one for sale, but then it will be sold before I have a chance. So I usually get people contacting me saying, oh, there's one for sale. But when I look at it, it's already gone. And that happened with this. So I bought it as a cassette only, which is Monster Muncher. It's quite a hard to find game, this one. Um, and Spectrum Games, this, I believe, was Ocean before they became Ocean. So it is quite sought after, these games. Uh, so what I did to make up for it, um, I basically downloaded the, the artwork from World of Spectrum and just printed my own, my own inlay, which, you know, I don't do these things for, for value or, you know, sort of um, anything like that. So it does me, you know, I've got the instructions in there. So it's not, I prefer to have original stuff, but, you know, that's, that's close enough. I've got the cassette or something. So yes, would I have paid 35 quid for the, you know, the complete edition? Yes, I probably would have. But as it happens, for £13, you know, I'm quite happy with that. Then we've got a couple of other cheap but hard to find ones, which I was quite pleased to get. First one is Silver Soft Muncher. That's that one there, which um, I'd only just started collecting the Pac-Man clones when I saw that come up for sale. Recognised it straight away, so I quickly grabbed that one. That, I think I paid about five quid for that. But yeah, that I think it's quite a good, quite a good game from memory. But it's easy to get confused with other Pac-Man clones, so I think I played that. This one I definitely haven't played. I only recognised it well. I say definitely haven't played. I don't think I have. Um, I recognised it by the cover. looked a bit Pac-Man-y. And when I Google imaged it, sure enough it is. So uh, that's not a common game either, I don't think. Spectres. But it is a Pac-Man clone. Again, 16K, 48K. So it's, it's going to be quite basic. But another fun one for the collection. And yeah, I will be doing another video on these um, Pac-Man clones. So uh, watch out for that if you are interested in those. Then we come on to, there's more Spectrum coming, but first we've got some SNES games. And I'll bring my computer back to life if I can, because this one is my first purchase from the swap shop, which is F-Zero. Didn't own this back in the day. I must be one of the only people that owned a SNES and didn't own F-Zero, because everybody knows this game. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to wake up my computer because I need to remember. <clears throat> Damn somebody. Uh, bear with me a second. Uh, Dan, Dan Hines, Dan Hines I got this from, and yeah, he offered me a really good price on it, so I grabbed that, and when it arrived, it came with this, FIFA Soccer, so um, yeah, I was quite pleased with that, it was very nice of him to include that, and as it happens, that sort of style, I'm not into football games, but that sort of era of isometric football games, I quite liked, I used to play those with my best mate, so uh, yeah, that's quite nice, Just going to collection as well. And then we've got another SNES cart, which is Super Mario Kart, the classic game I used to absolutely hammer. Um, myself and a friend of mine used to play this all the time after the pubs and clubs. And actually, my SNES, I think I mentioned before, I used to, I worked in a hotel and lived in, and I used to leave that in the staff room a lot of the time. So when we used to come back from the pubs and clubs, people used to have sort of mini tournaments on um, Super Mario Kart, Bomberman, and... Uh, What's the other ones? The uh, Smash TV. They pretty much all SNES. Pretty much all SNES games I own were all sort of multiplayer ones, and yeah, we used to really enjoy them. But Super Mario Kart was one, and fifteen quid. I think that's a really good price for that one. So yeah, grab that. I've been playing it. It's really it's, it's as good as ever. Then we go on to these two sort of classics, which aren't in the best condition, but they were cheap again. Gauntlet. I think we all knew and loved that one. Game I used to play a lot of. A few of my mates had this one, so if you went around anybody's house, you could almost guarantee they had gauntlet. So it's one of those sort of stables that you could, or stables that you could play. And the other one is Rampage. These came from the same seller. Again, not great condition, but they were cheap. And Rampage, me and my best mate used to play this a lot, so 
good memories there as well. This one, somebody actually, um, a seller I bought from before, knew I was after this game, and they just contacted me out of the blue and said, are you still looking for this particular game? And I said, yes. And they said they got one. It's not the best condition, but if I'm interested, which I was, and that is Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, the coin-up. So the specy port of this was pretty good, um, but as you can see, it's quite squashed, this one. So the condition isn't great, but you know, the price reflected that. They offered me a really good, I can't remember how much I paid, something like seven quid. And the nice thing is they included this cassette inside as well. And that's got uh, Jack and Nipper on it. So uh, that's quite cool because I, I haven't got Jack and Nipper and it was a game I liked back in the day. So, uh, so yeah, that's that one there. And then we've got this one I bought because I thought this might be the game I used to play with my best mate. We used to play a lot of a fishing game on a PlayStation 1, but I can't remember which game it was. Um, my best mates are no longer with us, sadly, so uh, I can't ask him. But we used to play this fishing game. No idea what it, what it was called. There were a lot of fishing games on the PlayStation. But I saw this action bass, and I thought, oh, that might be it. Look familiar on the back. The, the, the screenshots look like the right game. But I've played it since, and it, it's not the one. But it was cheap, as you can see, four quid. You know, nice condition. So uh, I don't mind buying it, but I'm still on a search for what the game may be. So if you've got any suggestions on what it could have been, going by those screenshots, they look very much the same, as I suppose most uh, PlayStation 1 games do. But yeah, I'm still on the search for the right one. Then we've got a couple of VHS, which I bought from a charity shop across the road from me. And we've got Blues Brothers, 50 pence. And the other one, which was great actually, because I was uh, reminiscing with Paul Retrobate about um, this movie. He picked it up on VHS, which is Dark City. Uh, very much kind of like it. it had a lot of influence on uh, Matrix, I think. And I watched this before the Matrix, really enjoyed it. And yeah, we've been talking about it. I went over to the charity shop and there it was, 50 pence. So grabbed that. Unfortunately, I've since been back, they had loads of VHS cassettes. But when I went back in there the other day, they haven't actually got any left. So I think probably somebody, probably a reseller, went in and just bought the whole off. But I'm glad I got those first. Uh, and then we've got some BBC Micro games, which I'll be more about that in a minute, because this is my first ever BBC Micro game that I've purchased. <laughs> and it's a compilation. I got this for a couple of quid. I think I got it for £2.30. Uh, Micro Power Magic. And I don't know if you can see the games on the back there. But the main one I wanted on here is Killer Gorilla, because that's a game I played before. And I remember it was a really good um, version of Donkey Kong. You've got Killer Gorilla, Stock Car, El Dorado, Gold, Ware, Dune Rider, uh, Barrage, what else is on there? Plutonium Plunder, Nemesis, Labyrinth, I don't know the other games, but yeah, for a couple of quid, it's worth having. And then I've also got these two, which came with the system, which again, I'll chat about in a minute. Beachhead, Paperboy. And my last pickup, which is probably my most exciting, because it's one I've been after for a very long time, is 24-9er on a TI-99. Um, you'll probably notice straight away this is a bit of a weird looking cartridge, especially if you compare it to the sort of standard cartridges, which if you look, it's a different sort of size and shape to those. There is a reason for that. And I'll probably, yeah, I will do a second uh, separate video on that one actually. So that'll be coming up. And then we come on lastly to the biggest one, which is hence the BBC Micro Games. And that is the BBC Master, which um, I always thought if I had one more system to my collection, it would be a BBC Micro, because that's what we used to play a lot at school. So I've got fond memories for that. All these systems, they have to have nostalgia for me to, to bother with them. And so far, they've all the ones I've rebought have been stuff I owned back in the day. But this one, we used to have them at school. And probably like most people, I'd imagine, we had mainly BBC Micros. And in our particular school, we had used to have them in rows of sort of probably about six, I expect, you know, sort of six tables beside each other and then the next row. And on each row, there would be one BBC Master. So if you ended up being sat at that one, you know, well, for me at least, I used to feel pretty important being on this one. So uh, when I saw it for sale on the Facebook site for a good price, couldn't resist it. It was going to be a birthday present actually from my wife, but um, I think partly because I had to get it out and test it. One, I don't think she wanted it hanging around the house because it's bloody massive. 
<laughs> and two, I don't think she fancied wrapping it. So she, when I finished testing it, she said, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> so yeah, I've been playing it. You can see how much aging it's got because of, there used to be a sticker there, probably a school sticker, I expect. So uh, yeah, it's got a bit of pattern there, but it works. Uh, it's got the disk drive, which doesn't actually work at the moment. Um, it does switch on and everything, but it, it doesn't load disks so that might need cleaning. And it's also got the GoTech under there. So that's quite a cool way of uh, of sort of downloading and playing games. So yeah, there we go, that's the BBC Master. I was hoping to get a cartridge for these. I always remember flicking these little slots about when I was at school, uh, but mostly they're educational, so I wouldn't bother with those. And they are compatible with um, Acorn Electron games, uh, cartridges, but sadly, the apparently the, the games themselves, which I was hoping to get, they do either run really fast or they don't run at all. So uh, I've had to rethink that. I was hoping on getting Hopper or something like that to go in there. But uh, so yes, yeah, so that'll probably stay as it is for now. Anyway, that's uh, 16 minutes. So I'll probably finish up there. There will be, um, for those that like their retro, there will be Swap Shop on later on, Retro Chef. And also on, I think it's Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll be on Micromaniacs, which is Lee, um, Nerdy Geezer is his YouTube name, and I'll be on there with Scott Sega Zombie and Paul Retrobate. So that should be a good little discussion. That'll be about eight o'clock, I think. So uh, yeah, I'll catch you on there if you're if you're up for watching a bit of sort of random chat. Hmm. In the meantime, cheers, happy Sunday or happy weekend, and uh, I'll catch you another time. That is all. Thanks for watching. <laughs>